Yeah. Welcome back. Today we're looking at five running backs that so you should be drafting over five other running backs that are going ahead of them. Okay, so basically we're looking at a player that's getting drafted very high and we're saying, hey, can we find a player going around two rounds, five rounds later that plays stylistically the same, should have the same role in their offense, and that offense overall is similar enough that we should get somewhere near the same type of output from that player that we're drafting four rounds later, okay? Last year, I told y'all to draft Josh Jacobs instead of Joe Mixon. Last year, I said to draft Lenny instead of Najee Harris. Last year, I said to draft Devin Singletary instead of CEH in the same exact video, the same version that we did last summer, okay? So a lot of those players going in, like you might might say, hey, Lenny was a bad pick, but Najee Harris was going as like the ninth, 10th overall player. Leonard Fournette was 25th overall. They were very stylistically the same player in somewhat similar situations that obviously when you look back at it Leonard Fournette actually jumped Najee Harris in terms of fantasy points per game they finish as like the RB 13 14 next to each other so these are these are what we call arbitrage opportunities you look at something and you say hmm this is very very similar in what I can get output wise but I'm paying a much lower cost for it so today Five running backs that you should be drafting ahead of these five other running backs because they're probably going to do similar things in 2023 fantasy football. Y'all know what to do next. Tuck it in. Flex the traps. Let's eat. Now, I don't usually do giveaways, but we have this beautifully signed. I know you guys wish this was a Nick Ercolano signed helmet, but it is a Nick Chubb signed helmet, the second best Nick that you guys know. It's beautiful. It's just like a crispy matte brown, Cleveland Browns Nick Chubb signed helmet. I just want y'all to go leave a, a rating and review on the podcast. We are on every podcast uh, app under BDGE Fantasy Football. And for some reason, I don't know why, people are really not liking our podcast. We're getting a lot of bad ratings recently. People are yelling at us, and I'm like, man, I feel like we're putting in work over here. Me and Noah and the team, we're, we're making a lot of videos, and we do a lot of research for these videos, and we're just getting heat. So I would love for y'all to go leave a rating and review on iTunes or on Spotify, either one, uh, under BDGE Fantasy Football, telling us, what you like about the show, or you can be honest, what you don't like about the show, I would prefer a five-star rating and review, but I'm not going to force you to do it. Any rating and review will automatically be entered into the giveaway for the Nick Chubb signed helmet, and we'll pick one of you guys in like a week or two, and um, and we'll send that out to you. So thank you. Let's get to this year's list of running backs. A two-time visitor of this list. We have Najee Harris going 37th overall. Now, you might think I'm talking about Najee Harris if I were to say the following things. This guy... Looked really good at the end of last year. Very likely due to a lower body injury that he came into the season with, dealing with, and was recovering from throughout the entirety of the season. He is a 215 pound plus workhorse that's 25 or younger and has the size and the skill set to play on all three downs. The offense that he played in averaged 18.1 points per game last year, which was 26 in the NFL. You might think I'm talking about Najee Harris, but I'm not. I'm talking about Cam Akers going 76th overall, which is about 40 spots later or three rounds later. I want to be clear here. This video, the guys that I mention that you should be drafting instead, the first guy I mention, they're not necessarily guys off my board. I just think there are arbitrage opportunities. There will be many videos that I make, like this upcoming Friday, on guys that I am absolutely not going near in fantasy drafts this year but this is just saying if you are thinking about the first guy it might make sense to to take a second pause breathe tuck your shirt in and think about waiting a couple rounds maybe grabbing a wide receiver there at the turn maybe grab the Amari Cooper at the 3-4 turn instead of Najee Harris and then grab Cam Akers in the sixth or seventh round just just consider the second guy it's not necessarily a fade on the first guy so naming all of those things I'm not talking about Najee Harris I'm talking about Cam Akers Cam Akers was fantastic down the stretch last year Cam Akers averaged over 100 total yards from scrimmage per game over the last month of the season last year, he came into the year obviously recovering from the Achilles tear, almost fucking got cut from the team, but by the end of the year became the absolute workhorse there. He is still very, very young, 24 years old. He is 215 pounds. We know he could do all three things. We know he can run the ball. We know he can catch the ball. We know he has the size to stay on the field for all three downs. 
This offense is, I, I think, very much like the Steelers' offense, has a very wide range of outcomes for how good that they will be this year. If Matt Stafford and Cooper Cup stay healthy, this offense will probably be relatively okay. There will be, you know, the 15th, 16th, 14th, 18th scoring offense in the NFL. I think the same thing with Pittsburgh. If Kenny Pickett's terrible, this could be the 22nd, 23rd highest scoring offense in the NFL. If he's good, maybe they're 15, 16, 13, something like that. So I think the situations are eerily similar. And I think the fact that Akers is more athletic, Akers is more explosive, and Akers has absolutely nobody to compete with in that backfield. They have the munchkin size Kyron Williams there. They drafted Zach Evans in the sixth round this year. So they don't have any real veteran presence, anyone that could push Cam Akers. And based on how they finished last year, Cam Akers seems to be the guy that's going to enter this year as the workhorse. So I will be taking Akers 40 picks later. Running back number two. Now, you might think I'm talking about Jameer Gibbs if I were to say this. You want an extremely shifty, undersized running back who specializes in being smooth and catching passes. You might think I'm talking about Jameer Gibbs if I were to say that he's only competing with targets from a very clear, young alpha at wide receiver. A rookie tight end and some other unproven young wide receivers behind him. You might think I'm talking about Jameer Gibbs if I were to say he is competing with a 220 plus pound running back that will likely take most of the early down and goal line work. You might think I'm talking about Jameer Gibbs if I were to tell you that he's going to be running behind an objectively ranked top 10 offensive line. You might think I'm talking about Jameer Gibbs based on that description. I'm not. I'm talking about Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers. Jameer Gibbs currently going around the 3-4 turn at ADP of 39. Aaron Jones at 54. So you're talking about 15 picks or a round and a half later. There has been very, very little hype around Aaron Jones. And I get it. The uncertainty of Jordan Love is probably the biggest factor. But last year when Devontae Adams departed, we were all excited about Aaron Jones and his role in the passing game. And we got it. He set career highs across the board. This is still a very good offensive line. This is a, an offense like Detroit where they have Amon Ross St. Brown, a young alpha wide receiver, and they have Christian Watson, a young alpha wide receiver. Behind that, they have rookie tight end, Sam Laporta, Tucker Kraft, Luke Musgrave, whatever, and a bunch of young, unproven wide receivers. Jamison Williams out for the first six games. I get it. They got nothing else on that depth chart at wide receiver. Gibbs has David Montgomery. Aaron Jones is A.J. Dillon. David Montgomery is much better than A.J. Dillon is. Now, if you told me by the end of Gibbs' rookie contract, he had a season in which his reception numbers were higher than any season in which Aaron Jones has had reception numbers, I would believe that. I have a hard time believing that Jameer Gibbs out the gate is going to catch 80, 85 passes. I think Aaron Jones is likely going to catch 60, 65, 70 passes this year in this offense. I think Aaron Jones will be more involved in the ground game. I think Aaron Jones is the arbitrage play for Jameer Gibbs. Yes, Gibbs is a little bit more explosive. Yes, you might feel a little bit more confident in that Detroit offense, but they're not that dissimilar in terms of their fantasy output for this year. And I think you need to start thinking about it. The fact that Aaron Jones, who has proven it year in and year out, he was the RB10 in fantasy last year, is getting drafted around and a half later. It is nonsensical. This might be the most nonsensical ADP in all of fantasy football right now, and it's James Cook at pick 95, which is in the eighth round of drafts. Now, you might think I'm talking about James Cook if I were to say this. You're a sub 200-pound running back. You're the youngest, most explosive running back in what projects to be one of the highest scoring offenses in the NFL this year. Now, you have two veteran running backs that you are competing with in your backfield, one of them being 31 years of age or older that could steal early down and goal line work. Now, it wouldn't be a huge surprise to see one of those two veteran running backs cut before the season started. You played your college ball in the SEC, and you are a good pass catcher. You might think I was talking about James Cook, but everything I just said also applies to the rookie sensation out of Texas A&M, Devon A-Chain. You're a sub-200 pound running back. Now, James Cook admittedly has 10, 15 pounds on Devon A-Chain, but you are the youngest, most explosive back in what projects to be a very high-scoring offense this year. Buffalo was a little bit better than Miami, but if Tua is healthy, that Miami offense is going to run. Usain Bolt type beat down in South Beach, all right? You have two run you have two veteran running backs in your backfield. James Cook is now competing with both Damian Harris and Latavius Murray. Devon A chain is dealing with Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson. One of those in both backfields may be cut before the season starts. Both of them play their college ball in the SEC. James Cook at Georgia, Devon A chain at Texas A and M. And both of them are, while James Cook is definitely a better pass catcher than Devon A. Chain, Devon A. Chain actually had better singular seasons in terms of pass catching 
in college than James Cook did. James Cook still to this day has never had a game with more than 14 carries dating back to his four years at Georgia. Buffalo, he averaged fewer than two targets per game last year. He was supposed to be this dynamo pass catching back. And don't get me wrong, I think he has a time and place in the Bills offense. I think he will be a specialty player. I think they can get involved in the red zone, but there's just absolutely no shot that he is going to be the goal line back there. I don't think Devon A-Chain probably has that role either, but I think they'll get similar number of touches. Devon A-Chain, I think, is far more explosive, and I think Miami has a good chance to be just as good of an offense overall as the Buffalo Bills. Devon A-Chain currently going off the board at 112th overall, which is 17 picks later, so you're talking about a round and a half, two rounds later than James Cook. Demi A-Chain over him all day. Running back number four, Rashad White. Okay, he's getting picked 83rd overall, so you're talking about 7th roundish. This one's kind of long, but I promise this fits both running backs I'm going to talk about. You might think I'm talking about Rashad White if I were to say, coming out of college, you were billed as a hyper-athletic potential three-down workhorse. You were viewed as a raw runner with questionable vision, but you have an emphasis on your elite production in the receiving game. Okay, you got real receiving game chops. You were very good in the receiving game in the NFL last year. You might think I'm talking about Rashad White if I said you had 58 targets. You ranked inside the top 20 in receptions and receiving yards. On the contrary, you might think I was talking about Rashad White again if I told you that you were very poor on the ground last year. You averaged fewer than 2.6 yards after contact per attempt, which was outside of the top 33 running backs. Your PFF elusive rating was lower than 36, ranking outside of the top 31 running backs. You only had four breakaway runs. You had a juke rate below 22%, which is terrible, ranks outside of the top 28 running backs. You might think I was talking about Rashad White if I told you that you lost over 185 carries last year to a running back that's about 225 pounds. Your quarterback situation is totally up in flux. You have a veteran quarterback that'll battle a young quarterback uh, who has virtually no experience to be the starter in your offense. Your offensive line is probably going to be pretty bad, likely a bottom 10 offensive line. You might think if I said all the things I was talking about Rashad White, I am actually talking about Antonio Gibson, who is going 30 picks after Rashad White is at pick 114. Now, the obvious elephant in the room is that Uncle Lenny is no longer in Tampa Bay, and Rashad White likely does have a role in terms of the starting job there. Now, this was something I said coming into last year. I was a very big fan of Rashad White, but I thought the hype kind of exceeded what he might become because he was a very raw prospect, like I said, build as hyper-athletic, potential three-down workhorse coming out of college. That remains to be the truth from both White and Antonio Gibson. Both were viewed as very raw runners. Both of them had limited uh, work in the run game, but both of them were hyper-efficient in the receiving game last year, especially Antonio Gibson. Now, Gibson's obviously competing with Brian Robinson, but if you look at any of the efficiency numbers, while Gibson was really bad on the ground, so was Brian Robinson. They were equally bad. Brian Robinson just saw a bunch of 20 carry games. But if Gibson can improve on the ground, he also came into the year with an injury, with a foot injury, whatever it was, and I think he got surgery on it this offseason. If he could be healthy and hit back to his explosive self, I could see him cutting into that Brian Robinson role. So this, again, not to say I'm completely fading white, not to say I'm like really on board with Antonio Gibson. I don't think he's a great running back, but if you're looking at their exact profiles, they are pretty much extremely similar going into the year. And you're getting Antonio Gibson in the 10th or 11th round of fantasy drafts when you're getting Rashad White in the 7th, 8th round of fantasy drafts. So something to consider there. And the fifth and final one on this uh, on this list. Now, this is kind of a reach. This is more for uh, you best ball bros out there who are looking for like 16th, 17th, 18th round shots in the dark. Jerome Ford. He's going 175th overall, and admittedly, I've been taking a lot of him because it's very clear that based on all the reports and stuff, he's going to be the guy behind Nick Chubb, but I think if you looked at that from a holistic standpoint, Kareem Hunt was technically the guy behind Nick Chubb last year, and he didn't do shit for fantasy football, so you still have to be, just because you have a certain role doesn't mean that you're automatically getting fantasy points. You still have to be good at football. You still have to be good at that role that you're in, and Kareem Hunt had been good. Last year, he wasn't good, and you saw the difference. When you're not good at what you're doing, you're not going to present good fantasy points to your owner, okay? So you could draft Jerome Ford. You could draft a day three running back. You could draft Jerome Ford because he is getting opportunity due to the fact that there's a veteran in that backfield who is on their way out this offseason. You could draft Jerome Ford because this is going to be a good offense, one that should be more pass-centric this year just because of the personnel there. You can draft Jerome Ford 
However, he has a very clear starting running back ahead of him. You could draft Jerome Ford because he is somewhat of an explosive runway runner. That's what he does best. He is not a pass catcher. You could draft him for all those things at pick 175, or you could draft Dwayne McBride in Minnesota at pick 215 for those very same things. He was a day three pick in Minnesota. Dalvin Cook is on his way out of Minnesota. I broke that fucking news when he lands in Buffalo or New York Jets. Don't come crying back to me because I told y'all that shit first. If he lands in Miami, things are not going to look good for Nicky Leakes, but he's going to be in a good offense. Minnesota is going to be a good offense that's going to be more pass-centric this year because without Dalvin Cook, you're going to have to pass the ball more. And they bring in Jordan Addison. They have TJ Hawkinson. They have Justin Jefferson. Kirk Cousins is going to set career highs in pass attempts this year. And, um... They both have a very clear starting running back ahead of them, Nick Chubb and Alexander Madison. You tell me which one's the better running back. You tell me which one is less likely to be jumped for that starting role. Dwayne McBride, not a pass catcher. Jerome Ford is a runway runner. Dwayne McBride is also a, 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 I wouldn't even call him a runway runner. He is a runner. That's what he does. He is a bully on the ground, but he is elusive. He has shake and bake. He makes guys miss. Dwayne McBride is a better running back than Jerome Ford is. There's no doubt about that in my mind. If you look at pretty much any statistic for running the ball coming out of college last year, Dwayne McBride ranked in the top five yards created, missed tackles, force per attempt, all that kind of stuff. Dwayne McBride's not necessarily like explosive. Jerome Ford, if you give him a runway, he will be able to hit it because he's pretty fast, but he's not good. He has no wiggle to him. He's not a good third down back. Dwayne McBride is that guy though. I like Dwayne McBride in Minnesota. Dalvin Cook on, it's Alexander Madison, it's Tyson Chandler's like kind of cool, I guess. Dwayne McBride, I think, will get up that depth chart throughout the spring, throughout the offseason. So that is the fifth guy I would be taking. Just to recap real quick, instead of taking Najee at 37, take Akers at 76. Instead of taking Gibbs at 39, take Aaron Jones at 54. Instead of taking James Cook at 95, take Devon A. Chain at 112. Instead of taking Rashad White at 83, take Antonio Gibson at 114. Instead of taking Jerome Ford at 175, take Dwayne McBride at 215. And instead of leaving a one-star review, leave a five-star review for our podcast, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to them shits. BDGE Fantasy Football, that is what it's listed under. You'll be automatically entered into this beautiful Nick Chubb signed helmet giveaway. We're giving it to one of y'all for saying something nice about us, okay? So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be biked tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day throughout the NFL season. I love you. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.